Guys, finally moving back on this. I got my chain hooked up, getting ready to pull this motor out. I took the impact and broke the motor mount bolts loose here. I'm going to pull them out. I want you to pay attention to the size of this bolt. Now, this is a 2013 F450 with a V10. You see how big of a bolt it takes to hold that motor in there with all that raw power. I'm going to put that next to the bolt of my Isuzu Duramax. You know, those, those low power Isuzu V8s. I don't want you guys to get upset. Don't get jealous. You just need to see this. And don't go, don't get no set now. So here's my V10, and here's the 5 16ths for the Duramax. That's for the engine mount there. So, uh, you, hey, you be the judge. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's from the power steering pump. I just thought I'd give you Duramax guys a hard time, you know. I don't dislike Duramax. I, I have I'm not against them I don't hate them it's nothing like that it's just uh, they're not my first choice they're okay um, but everybody likes what they like so if you like Duramax go buy a Duramax if you like Ford you know which is far superior no I'm just kidding buy whatever you like I'm just kidding I'm gonna get this thing out of here be back in a minute okay guys let's try and get out of the sun glare here I got the oil pan off uh, I pulled the number three piston out uh, took it all loose there's nothing wrong with that connecting rod or that piston. Um, I'm going to go ahead and replace that piston just because uh, I really don't want to have something that's, you know, it's been hit. I mean, I don't see anything. I, I've looked at it long and hard, but I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and replace that. But uh, something I did want to show you. Oh, before I tell you that. So I ran a straight edge this way and then this way. To make sure that connecting rod wasn't bent, which I, I didn't think it would be, but uh, it's straight as an arrow. And changing that piston won't be a big deal because those are snap rings on each side. And if you pay attention, you can see the connecting rod moving and the wrist pin stays there. And the wrist pin is not pressed in, so that'll be simple to change. Something I was a little disappointed when I took it apart and saw. Um, I'm going to show you this. Um, all you Ford haters will enjoy this. Um, see if that'll focus on there. See what that is? That looks like a raw casting to me. I'm not really understanding that. And the cap is the same way. A raw cast, uh, you know, just a raw casting. Um, pretty, pretty rough. There you go. Anyway, so when you put it together and you match, I thought there's no way this thing would even, you know, lay flat. So if you put the keyway right here to this one, and again, the, I, well, let me finish this. Look how tight that is. I mean, you, that cracks finer than frog hair. I mean, that is, that's tight. I would have never guessed that. Uh, I'm going to have to look, but uh, these may be stretch bolts on this connecting rod. Um, I'll pull up the spec, but, you know, that's what everything is these days, stretch bolts. Um, hey, one thing I want to mention, like, when I'm turning this engine over, I don't like to use channel locks, vice grips, or anything like that on the end of these crankshafts. So I've had this for years and years and years. And... I don't, it must just be pure stupid luck, but um, I've used this thing on small block Chevys, I've used it on 2.8s, uh, 3.1s, and all kinds of GMs and Fords, and it, I mean, damn, it fits every time. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's just blind luck. I can't imagine it'd be industry standard, but anyways, uh, I pulled the, let's see if we can get a picture here. So there's the, the crank. Um, those marks, they show up in the cam bearings and in the, in the rot on the crank, but man, I put your finger across it smooth as glass. Um, I took a little dental pick, you know, mechanics type pick, and went across there, and you can't feel anything. I pulled off the main cap um, and checked those bearings. They're absolutely beautiful, and that's the farthest one, and the oil pump's up here. So I'm just going to get rods and mains for it, replace that piston head gaskets get the head fixed and I think we're putting her back together because 
like I said, the project I'm going to use this in, it's not a daily driver. It's going to be something a little bit different. And I'm not telling you what it is because uh, there's a good possibility to be like something else that I'm doing. It'll be a long time before I get to it. I shouldn't be messing with this motor right now, but I told you guys I'd take it apart and show you. So uh, that's what I wanted to do. And at least I know, you know, if I should take it out of the chassis, throw it away or, you know, whatever. But I'm going to order parts up. Um, unfortunately, uh, my parts are coming from Ford. And, you know, it's it's virtually almost impossible to buy engine parts anymore. Um, you know, the Napa doesn't carry them, Advance don't carry them. You know, nobody rebuilds motors anymore. Nobody repairs them. We throw them away. But uh, anyways, we're going to... I just got this hanging off the forklift, but when I go to do it, I'll uh, I'll set it up on a bench here. You know, I'll take it apart and stand it up so it's easier. That way I can do that piston and all the rods and mains, turn it over real easy. But uh, that's where we're at for now. So uh, I'm probably done for this for a while because I'm going to have to order parts. Seems like I say that a lot. Oh yeah, one more thing. I get a lot of guys comment and they send me emails actually about that candle sign. Um, I don't use candle oil. I don't like candle oil. It was in this place when I bought it. Um, I just never put a ladder up there to tear it down. Um, so for all you guys who hate candle, I'm not using it. So I uh, and my diesels I use Rotella 1540. Always had good luck with it. I know a lot of people run Rotella 1540 and everything, and they have really good luck. But anyway, so we're done with this for now. Uh, when I get back to putting it back together. I'll bring you along. I got another one of these trucks I'm I'm working on. I did a video about the the engine that self grenaded. Um, it was uh, it was in pretty bad shape. The the cylinder walls were actually broken out of it. And another one, not this motor, of course, but um, I've got an engine for that truck that needs to go back together. So I might be doing that soon. I think that's a 2011. It's an F550 standard cab four wheel drive. Um, 84 cab to axle um, so like I said I have another motor ready to go in fact I'll show you where it's at it's sitting right here I've had this one sitting here waiting to go in that truck um, you know I did all new exhaust studs um, I put tensioner pulleys and spark plugs and um, I pulled the pan put rods and mains in it um, it, it was an original engine, had 106,000 on it, so we uh, pulled the valve cover, put it in the updated uh, uh, cam followers in there. Uh, it should have had them already, but just in case, I went ahead and did it. Uh, I don't want to have to go through what we did on this one. So, um, And you see here, we replaced the dipstick tube, so uh, that's going to go in that truck. So, man, that sun glare just keeps getting in there. But uh, yeah, look for that. This one's a uh, shoot. Where is it? Yep, 2011 emissions for an incomplete vehicle. Um, completely different um, as far as standards go versus a pickup truck. But uh, so there you go. Uh, look for the the next one's going to be that. Uh, yeah, I, I probably should get on that. That's 550. This engine's sitting waiting to go. So while I'm waiting for parts for the other one, I'll uh, I'll probably stuff this one in. So. We'll see you on the next one, guys.